Go away. Stop. This is not what you think it is. Going to... ah! It isn't bad behavior. It Stop. isn't bad Stop. parenting. She's an idiot! I hate her! It's far worse. I got a weapon! Give me back my ball! <gasps> Film me again. I just don't understand. Stop it! This is the dark side of a debilitating disorder called Tourette syndrome. <laughs> it's a personal prison and there's no cure. Stop! But these rage attacks and vivid illusions are a side of Tourette's most of us never see, oh never God. knew existed. <laughs> you sort of see a change come over the face. <clears throat> and then anything could happen. Um, he can be wanting to hit us, destroy things. Um, he sometimes imagines we're Casper. That's Casper the ghost. Where did Casper put my ball? A regular illusion. <coughs> Stop touching me, Casper! <coughs> and the most heartbreaking victims of all, the kids themselves. Like 13-year-old Cameron Schubert. What's the toughest thing? When I have hypermanic episodes, it's pretty bad. I'm not myself. I turn into a different person. And, like, I go, like, full-on rage. I, like, try and hurt people. And I throw stuff and, yeah. You can't help it. Yeah. <laughs> For those who don't know him, Cameron's Tourette's creates an, at times, awkward and embarrassing series of tics and outbursts. Fuck. I think most people just think it's swearing and, and yelling out. Don't look at the camera. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. But underneath all of that going on in here is Mental. anxiety. Tourette's is just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> And it's when Cameron's rage attacks strike Bye. that the Jekyll and Hyde nature of the condition Stop. appears. I'll go, go. Go it's not a build-up, it's a sudden switch from calmness to uncontrollable rage. Mm. And there's no in-between, there's no build-up, it just is so sudden. And there's nothing, nothing he can do, there's nothing we can do. You can't reason, they have to come back down themselves. It's very, very difficult. Stop. Stop. Let's go! No, I won't let go. Recently, we were outside a shop and he was yelling out at the top of his voice that I was not his mum, called the police. You don't know what you're going to get. Put it down. Do you know what you're doing? Do you, do you, is it you that's doing it? No. I go to the back of my head. The person comes from the back of my head and to the front of my head and I turn into him. <clears throat> and then I know what's happening. I can see it because, like, I'm in the back. But I can't take over control. It's like they're basically driving the car. I can't stop the car. He, he often refers to it as Cameron 2. And is there anything you can do to stop the rages coming on? Personally, I don't think there is. Generally, no. How long does it last? I think one of my longest has been two or three hours. No! After they've been through uh, an episode like this, the remorse that he feels is huge. It, 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 it envelops him again. He it becomes says, obsessional well, yeah, how he it's, reacted and behaved. It's an obsession of saying sorry over and over and over. I didn't I didn't. I feel like I've hurt people too much. I always feel a bit depressed, a bit down. I don't really want to go to school the next day. <laughs> and Cameron's not alone. Just... You fucking feel me again. I just don't understand. Stop it! So it's up here? At her family home on the Gold Coast. This is my room. I'm meeting 12-year-old Maddie Raywood. Oh, yes. OK. There's one, two, three holes right there. Where her bedroom resembles a battleground. Oh, my God. OK. Maddie, 
That's quite a hard wall. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I can't imagine you putting these holes in these walls, Maddie. <laughs> Look at that smile. <laughs> it's all the gymnastics yeah. made us strong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what does our doctor call it? The, the angry beast. Yeah. The angry beast comes the out. The angry beast comes out. Mm. Stop it! It's like an angry beast which um, basically controls over me. Maddie says and does things that I know that I just have to look and say that's not Maddie saying that. Um, it's we've had police help, we've had ambulance help, we've had to restrain Maddie. You're just looking at this child that you've had and all of a sudden it's a different child. So angry and upset. Is it the hardest part of this condition? Absolutely. It's just one of the most socially crippling, you know, um, disorders. It just overtakes me and it makes me feel a bit sad sometimes. I feel that my parents get really emotional and I don't like when that happens, so, yeah. How tough have these rage attacks been on you two, Nick? Oh, Joe, I don't know. It's, it's so varied, the emotions that you feel when you're going through it. Um, because you do feel undertones of anger because, you know, you're being yelled at. Um, but it's also sorrow because you're seeing your child going through this, knowing that they cannot help it and cannot stop, and just feeling... Uh, I don't know, how do you describe it? It's... you can't do anything to help. Ah! Write your ideas down. Maddie's in year seven, and it's here at school in a quiet, focused classroom. Ten more seconds. That the tension of holding in her tics and outbursts can reach boiling point. Out of nowhere, a rage strikes, and we find her storming through the school grounds. Suddenly, Maddie isn't Maddie anymore. For Maddie's teachers, this disruptive and distressing behaviour is all too familiar. And what happens in one of those meltdowns, Caitlin? She can be slamming the doors or pulling down the posters or throwing things at the door. Um, there's a time where I've actually needed Lever's assistance and she's come down and she's throwing her phone at Lever, um, obviously using those colourful language to get us away because she doesn't want us to be there. Even though she's seeking that attention, it's more that this the rage has taken over then. And it's not so much her that's in control. It's something else, isn't it? That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. So difficult that Caitlin Cleary and Lever Rimboltz will often walk Maddie from one class to another. A therapy dog, Solo, helps calm Maddie too. The high school that Maddie's at have been above and beyond. They are amazing. Without those ladies, I don't know how we'd do it. No. Yeah, she's a very lucky girl. Very lucky girl. Very lucky. Yeah. When it all becomes too much, kids like Maddie and Cameron come here to the Kooky Clinic, run by Gold Coast psychiatrist Dr Shannon Morton. Rage symptoms can happen in up to 70% of kids with Tourette's syndrome. What are some of the worst cases you've seen? with these rages? I've seen um, kids who have demolished their houses, um, where their houses look like war zones. So serious damage these kids can do. I've had kids where they've, you know, unfortunately broken bones or physically really hurt themselves. Or um, other people. Or other people. The Schuberts and the Raywards are two families dealing with a condition that has drastically altered their lives, for which there is no cure. Why? Cameron Stop. and Maddie have Tourette syndrome and the shocking rage attacks Stop. that come with it. How difficult is it for you, Bruce, seeing this, seeing your boy go through this? You've got to detach yourself a little bit sometimes. How do you do that? You keep focusing on a bigger picture and putting yourself way down the list. And sometimes so, you can't. No, sometimes you, can't. you get 
to the point where you can't. And that's when you kind of say to the other one, you have to deal with this tonight. See you later, Kev. But there is something that seems to quell the awkward and often embarrassing symptoms of the disorder. You got a day. It isn't rocket science either. It's as simple as playing high energy sports or anything that requires intense concentration. Bruce, he's going pretty well out there. He loves it. Yeah. Absolutely loves it. He's the smallest kid on the side, but he just loves basketball. So that's fine. We'll let him play as much as he likes. <laughs> no. no, you can't. Smallest kid, biggest heart. Maybe, yeah. Finish. <laughs> Diane, I'm, I'm noticing there aren't as many ticks. That's right. That's because he's concentrating, right? Yep, yep, he's yeah. hyper-focused. He's trying to do his very best. Relax and enjoying it. You know, if it was sitting in a class concentrating, it wouldn't be the same. I can still see some ticks. I've seen him chewing on his shirt a little bit and um, making a few funny faces. But essentially, yeah, all but gone. He's having a ball out there, isn't he? He does, he loves yeah. it. And he's got good mates out there. And for Maddie, it's gymnastics, where her mind is occupied and at peace. Push. Much better. And, and I, know you do gym <laughs> I know you do gymnastics. Yep. Does that help? Yes, it does. It really does. It just helps to get my mind off my traps and rages and ticks. Physical activity and acceptance, yep. For Maddie, just to be in an environment where she can be herself, um, and she's got a very outgoing, beautiful personality. So when she can be herself, she feels just like herself. And what do you think the best medication is? I guess it's just treating a lot that treat anybody else. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It sounds like good old common sense, and even doctors agree. There are a lot of kids where if they just have understanding and support of those around them, won't need to be on medication. And so, you know, we save them having side effects by educating everyone around them. Acceptance is the best medicine. Absolutely. Hands down. Yeah. Wanker. And that's exactly what Cameron and his mum, Diane, are out to do. Bitch. I have with me Bitch. Cameron. Today, they're visiting a Brisbane school to explain what Tourette's is all about. Not to judge, and especially not to bully. We're just here to talk to you a bit about um, <laughs> Tourette's and what to do and what not to do. Like, not be mean and stuff. This speech is particularly important because there's a Good student job. at this school who, like Cameron, has Tourette's. His name is Matthew, and he's 11. I'd like to thank everyone for supporting me and... Huh. 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 Gay. Fuck you! And... Hey. That's about it, I think. We're lucky to have them. Yeah, we're so lucky. They're natural performers, naturally creative, natural comedians, big-hearted, kind... You'll never find kinder kids. So we, we've got a lot we can learn from them. It's OK if you laugh with him, but don't laugh at him. And it, to bully, it's not good to bully. And I just think you shouldn't bully because it makes it a lot worse. Anything you want to say, Mum? Uh, just don't bully, please. Don't really bully anyone, actually, but it makes our Tourette's a lot worse. Thanks, boy. Thanks for coming around.